Hello, hello. So this is a short presentation on Stereo MOSCAM, which is a Raspberry Pi portable stereo camera, which I put together in the process of a, in, over the course of a class in uh, an independent study in, in digital camera engineering, which I led at College of the Atlantic in, in spring 2020. So before I get into the nitty gritty of the way that the camera works, how it's assembled, how it's put together, the way that you might be able to make your own, I just want to uh, call back to the project goals that I set for myself when I started when I started this. And so there's three main goals, right? The first thing is the sort of overarching goal, which is that I wanted to be able to produce a, a portable stereo camera, so it has to be portable, right? Um, for artistic and scientific applications, so it has to have features that are um, aimed at artist uses and also features that are aimed at, at scientific applications. So that involves a lot of experimental features and also a lot of uh, very explicit control over all the settings that the camera has so that people uh, can really, well, users can really get what they want out of it. Uh, and the, the other specification in this goal is that the camera had to use a Raspberry Pi compute board as the computing unit. And the main reason for that is that the Raspberry Pi compute board is basically just a little chip with um, with a processor on it uh, that you can, that the Raspberry Pi Foundation developed for uh, for industrial applications initially, I believe. And what's, what's good about it is that it's very flexible. So you can put it on, you need to have a, a like a, you need to put it to, to put it on something, it plugs into to other chips, kind of like a RAM board, um, in order to actually get anything out of it. But you can plug it into a lot of different surfaces. So I used with this project, I used the stereo, the stereo Pi, which is a chip that allows you to plug into um, to Raspberry Pi camera module, camera modules or compatible camera modules with the Raspberry Pi at the same time using the compute board. But if anyone wants to use a different board rather than the stereo Pi that also has access to multiple cameras, that should work out of the box if you use the, um, if it's compatible with the, the Raspberry Pi compute board. So that was the big motivation behind the compute board. The second big goal that I had is to, at the end of this project, release an open source software package for the stereo camera. And that software package should be capable of several things. The first thing it should be able to do is it should be able to record images and video consistently um, with consistent quality and uh, while consistently applying the settings that it's being asked to in software. The second thing it should be able to do is it, it should be able to uh, automatically adjust capture settings based on the quality, the temperature and the quantity of light. So some of these things were already available in the libraries of code that I was using to implement to, to build this program. Some of these things, notably the um, the automatic adjustments of according to the temperature of light uh, were things that were a bit of an enge engineering challenge that I, I ended up having to spend a lot of time baking into the into the program. Uh, and the third thing it should be able to do is it should be able to apply user-defined capture settings through a graphical user interface or GUI. And so this means that the program, the, the development of this program also involved the design and, <coughs> sorry, the design creation of a graphical user interface. Finally, the, the last thing I wanted to achieve with this project is at the end of the project, I wanted to release detailed software documentation. So part of this is through devlogs, which I have made available publicly on my GitHub account, which will be linked at the end of this presentation. And part of it is going to be included in this actual presentation. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about the hardware for um, the Stereo MOSCAM. So let me see if I have it. There you are. This is, this is the MOSCAM as it stands currently. So if you look inside right now, I have a little USB to connect it as a power source, but this is essentially just connected to a, a plus and minus uh, electrical, uh, two, well, a plus and a minus electrical cable. So you could plug this into a, a battery pack. You can, you, you can essentially, as long as you have a power source for it, this does not have to be attached to anything. So this fits my, uh, my specification of portability. So if you look at the front, you can see that it has um, the two cameras, 
and you have the ribbon cables that are connected to the cameras that, uh, that thread through the inside and connect to the stereo Pi board. And then the, uh, the, the Pi compute chip, oops, uh, the screw just fell off, but that's okay. Um, the Pi compute chip is behind the stereo Pi board um, and plugged into the stereo Pi. And so if you want to connect the to the peripherals of the stereo Pi, these are accessible on the outside. Right now, this is more of a proof of, a proof of concept design. So as you can see, it's just it's a, it's an old Adafruit repurposed box uh, that contained, I think, um, a little LCD or TFT screen for the Raspberry Pi, which I reconverted to be able to just to, I just use an X-Acto knife to uh, to cut through and uh, and align all of the ports so that they'd be accessible from the outside. So here you have a few extra um, a, a few more detailed pictures of the uh, the stereo Pi. You can see on the left you have a um, a sort of side view where you can see both the camera and the ports and the ribbons. Uh, in the middle you have a picture where you can see more of the ports that are accessible and you can see I believe on, on, under the to the, at the far left the little chip on the uh, on the very left um, just on the other side of the cardboard from my finger is the Raspberry Pi compute board and you can see what ports are available as well through the Raspberry Pi uh, through the, um, the stereo Pi so the stereo Pi this is the the, uh, the the there's two versions of the stereo pi there's a slim version and there's a non-slim version this is the non-slim version so it has a, a it has an ethernet port it has two usbs and has an hdmi port if you want to uh, connect it to an external display it also has gpio pins that you can see uh, in the third picture on the right um, so these are the the two lines of pins at the at the bottom of the board uh, that are above the cable, that are yes, above the cable, and so those can be connected, for example, to an LCD screen directly, so that you can have a live view of the of the Raspberry Pi uh, stereo MOS cam without actually have having to uh, to connect it to an external display. Um, so this is. This disp this uh, LCD display would usually be on the 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 stereo MOS cam, but unfortunately I don't have it here with me because I'm uh, I'm lending it to a friend so that they can uh, so uh, I've lent it to a friend with uh, another version of stereo MOS cam so that they can actually sh film a short film with it currently. So that's why that isn't available for us to see right now in the in the images or on my on my version here. So um, so what is the hardware? Let's just go back to what I was saying before. The hardware is uh, a Raspberry Pi compute board which is plugged into a stereo Pi, sort of like a RAM chip like I mentioned. And um, you the uh, it's connected to two Raspberry Pi compatible camera modules and uh, it's installed with uh, an SD card with an installed version of Raspbian OS. You can use any other version of Linux if you want, as long as you, as long as you've installed uh, Python three on it, you'll be able to run, uh, you'll be able to run the the Stereo Mask pro program. So one thing now I want to talk about is the graphical user interface for the program. So this is what you would see on the LCD screen if the LCD screen were connected. And it's what you would see as well if you plug in um, through the HDMI of the of the camera to an external monitor. This is what you would see on the external monitor. So, so the first thing when you turn on the the camera and it's plugged into a monitor or the LCD screen is the home screen. And the home screen right now, as you can see, is not completely finished. At the bottom of the home screen, there is a little box with text line one here and text line two here. So this is placeholder text that I haven't really made use of yet, but essentially this could display a number of things in the future. This could display uh, the current settings of the uh, of the camera, it could, or the two cameras. I mean, it could display um, the number of the amount of memory left. It could display the amount of pictures and videos that have been taken 
um, it could display, it could have a, a, a histogram. This this is this is a space where a lot of future implementations can can appear and haven't been uh, implemented yet, but will certainly arrive in the future installment of the program. On the right, um, you can see the menu icons. So on the on the on the top right, you can see the capture icon. To the right of this, on the LCD screen that I'm using, uh, that I I usually use with this. There's actually uh, on this to the right of that bar. There's actually four buttons. So if you click the buttons, they correspond to the um, to the the images on the LCD screen. So on the top right, you have the capture button, which will record video or photos depending on what current setting is selected. Uh, just below that, you have a toggle button for the menu overlay, which will essentially just um, enable or disable the overlay display, so that if you want to get a better view of the of the, the live video feed from the camera, uh, the cameras, you'll be able to get that if you just press it. Uh, the third button is a button that takes you to the settings menu of the camera. And then the fourth one at the very bottom right is a button that leads you to the gallery, uh, which my face is apparently obscuring a little bit right now. So um, what happens if you click to, if you click the, the settings button? So the, the, if you click the settings button, the setting, the, you get taken to the settings menu, which looks like this. Um, and so I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I have video coming up later on of the camera software running and being, being operated. But essentially this, um, this menu works very much the same way that the, the previous menu does. On the right, there's a bar with different uh, buttons that you can press. So there's the back button on the top uh, on the top right, and then under it you have the next up and next down button, which uh, actually change the values of the set of the currently selected setting. The currently selected setting is highlight highlighted in green, so you can see which setting is currently selected. Right now it's mode, uh, which it co which corresponds to photo or video mode, and then the last button on the bottom uh, the bottom right of the buttons bar is next setting. So that toggles to the next setting to the right. And once it re reaches the end of the, uh, the list on the right, it toggles to the first setting on the, the first setting down. So it toggles through all of the settings if you want to change a specific setting. Um, I want to describe a tiny bit of what the different settings do. Um, the mode setting, like I mentioned before, changes switches between camera and uh, between between photo and video mode. The active cameras determines whether you just want one camera active, which camera you want to be active, um, or two cameras, whether you want, and, and then how that arrangement of camera appears uh, in the final pictures and videos. So do you want it to be um, top down? Do you want it to be uh, the left camera, the, the left, the le do you want the left camera to appear on the left? Do you want the right camera to appear on the right? Do you want to switch that around? Do you want the left camera to be on top and the right camera to be on the bottom? or vice versa, or you just want the left camera or just the right camera. The shutter setting just allows you to change all the, the shutter speed. The ISO setting changes the ISO. The auto white balance controls the white balance, uh, the auto white balance mode. If that is set to off, you actually have to, um, to control the white balance yourself with the red gain and blue gain uh, controls. And then you have, um, uh, the effect setting. The effect setting essentially just applies a bunch of uh, effects mathematically to the image array that is stripped from the camera sensor and then feeds it back into um, into the, the graphical user interface so that you can see what it would do. So uh, essentially that, that might include things like um, making the image negative, solarizing the image, um, inverting the colors in the image, that sort of thing. It's fairly limited. It's going to be quite simple controls and quite simple edits, but the advantage is that you can do that directly in camera. The next thing that you have is the image resolution. So that controls the image resolution. You have the crop, which allows you to choose a specific area of the sensor to record images or videos on. You have the format, which right now is set to AVI, which means that if you, because it's set to photo as well, if you take, if you, if you press the record button on the, on the viewfinder, uh, on, the, on the viewfinder menu, you would record a one frame long video. And you have the frames per second, which is only active when it's a video format. 
on the gallery, which you can reach from the uh, the fourth button from of the from the viewfinder, you have uh, much much of the same sort of situation. On the right, you have uh, the back button, uh, which uh, is on the top right, and then on the uh, underneath that, you have the next up and next down buttons, which uh, flip through the the images in the gallery. Right now, the image and fo uh, video folder is empty, and then you have a delete button, which will delete the current image or video that is that is displayed. And that's pretty much all there is to it. The the text line one and text line two is also still available and not really implemented yet. But it's um, there's a lot of there's a lot of different ways that that could be uh, could be integrated in the camera. And I wanted that to be um, to sort of stay an open question because I'm I'm hoping that this will get community feedback and that I can crowdsource ideas for what can go in this space. So, okay, now I have a couple of videos that show the camera working. You won't be able to see which buttons are being pressed, unfortunately, because of the way that I recorded this. But essentially, you should be able to infer the way that they're being pressed. If the, the setting value is changing, it's the up or the down button that's being pressed. If the setting that's highlighted is changing, in here it's going to be the toggle setting um, button, so the, the bottom right that's being pressed. And if it goes back to the viewfinder, that's the back button on the top right that's being pressed. So yeah, that was a quick demonstration of the, uh, the camera in action working. You can see right now I was filming with very uh, low light, so the image quality isn't great. But this is mainly a demonstration of the graphical user interface, not of the actual camera, the cameras working. Because the cameras that I'm using currently on this are quite limited cameras, but these can easily be replaced by much better cameras. So these, these are very uh, low dynamic range, 5 me megapixel cameras that are associated with the Raspberry Pi. But you can get uh, you can easily get better cameras for these better sensors. So um, this next bit is a, a short uh, video that demonstrates the how the gallery works in video. So a short recording of the video of the of the gallery. Um, and and here uh, here if you if you see the camera the the program going back to the the viewfinder that's the top right button being pressed the back button. If you see the images switching, that's the uh, the top and bottom buttons being uh, pressed. So the next, so not the top and bottom, the the next up and next down buttons, so the arrow buttons that are being pressed. And um, I don't believe that any picture gets deleted, but if a picture gets deleted, then it's a little pop-up that says you want to delete and you have to press a second time. Um, but I don't think this happens in this in this recording. And so yeah, here again you get a little demonstration of the uh, the way that the gallery works and the way that you can switch between the images that are recorded. Um, and I took a, a couple test images just to uh, to display what they would look like. These are images that were actually taken with a couple effects on them, so this is why they look a little bit odd. And they were also taken with uh, a camera that doesn't have an infrared filter. Um, an infrared cult cut filter. So this is also a um, infrared sensitive, so it kind of infrared overloaded images. Um, the final thing I want to show is just the the way that changing the active camera settings changes what the active camera looks like, because I think that that might be something that's a little bit difficult to conceive of just by being explained orally. So um, essentially what I was saying is that if you switch the, uh, the active camera setting, it'll change the way that the cameras are arranged and it'll change which camera is active. So here it'll be switching between, um, between modes of cameras where there's two cameras active, but where the arrangement is different in different modes. So this is one, and this 
is another. This one has the right camera on the left and the left camera on the right. And this one would be bottom top. So the bottom camera first on the top and the, the top camera on the bottom. So um, we're getting to the point where now I should uh, I should talk a little bit about how the software itself works. Essentially, everything is coded through every everything is coded in Python, and uh, I'm using it. I'm using four different libraries of code that have been graciously contributed to by lots of other people before me in order to make this into a camera. So the workflow, the the way that the program um, runs is essentially through a library called PyCamera. I strip the raw image from the sensor. That, that that raw image data gets run through a program called OpenCV, which stands for Open Computer Vision, uh, which is a um, machine vision uh, library, which enables us to basically read and write images from raw data. That raw data information that's being read by OpenCV gets passed into a library called NumPy, which uh, essentially is a, um, a mathematics library for Python. But one of the good things that, that you can do with NumPy is that you can work with um, arrays of information, arrays of data. And this is perfect because actually images, digital images are arrays of different mathematical values, uh, numeric values. So uh, what NumPy does in this program is that it converts the image arrays, the arrays of, of different values, to be read by the final library that gets used in this program, which is Pygame. And Pygame in this uh, in this context is the graphical user interface engine. So it's the program, the library that generates the graphical user interface and displays the sensor image uh, on the video feed when you go on the viewfinder, which is the the, the main uh, menu that appears when you turn on the camera program. So if you're interested in learning more about how the program works seeing the documentation for yourself of, of the development and also and also uh, trying the program out for yourself or building the camera i would greatly encourage you to to go test it out on uh https uh, colon slash slash github.com slash phileasdg slash open moscam with uh which is spelled the open moscam spelt in um upper camel case Um, so yes, this was my uh, this was my presentation about Open Moscam. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you're interested, I hope you give it a test. I go. I hope you give it a try. Thank you very much.